morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are. And um, welcome to this, the third webinar in the series for human resource managers and staff. Um, in this webinar, we're going to talk about training and continuing professional development with a quick look at uh, some issues about how this affects quality. Okay. So I think we know where, you're, where you are. We have some people in Russia, some in one person in China, I think, um, one in Los Angeles, one in Milan, and I'm here in Lisbon again. Uh, the other day, here's a, here's a photo I took the other day. I was on a, a walk, a morning walk. Uh, it was quite stormy. And I saw a man you can see in the bottom of the photograph, I think, who's fishing. And he was particularly calm on this, this day. He was an old man. Um, and it was a stormy day. He was all on his own. And he looked very content. And it looked as if he had a very fulfilling life and career. Um, and that he was enjoying his retirement. And that got, got me thinking about... Um, careers and how we can make the most of the time that our staff enjoy working with us. Okay, so that's really what, what today's seminar is about. Now, let's have a look at what we're going to be talking about. Um, so as usual, we're going to look at some of the language that we saw in the last session, which was about performance appraisals, just a very quick reminder to help you remember that language. And we're going to be looking at the language of careers and staff development. Um, that's the main theme of this particular seminar. We're going to go through um, the career of a particular person to date and look at some plans for her training in the future. Also, we'll have a quick look at what continuing, continuing uh, professional development actually means and how it fits within the plans of an organization. And as I said, finally, we'll have a look at some quality issues uh, related to training. Okay. So just to begin, here is some of the language we saw on the last session, which, as I said, is about performance appraisals. And we saw a form, uh, which were indicators of someone's performance. We saw their attendance. Did they have any days off? Their punctuality. Did they get to work on time and stay um, <coughs> for the time they're expected? We looked at the organization of the particular person, her abilities, her time management, uh, how she related to her colleagues. Now, her perception was rather different from her colleagues' perceptions, so her manager will need to look at that in, in the future. Her relationship with the clients, similarly, um, that one she performed pretty well. Now, she seemed to be a very motivated person. Um, she's been with the company for six months, and she's doing pretty well. And there she is. And her name was Lucy, and she was working for Tula, Tula Marketing. Okay. <clears throat> so we looked at why we have um, performance appraisals in the first place. Um, some of the reasons are that uh, we want to review the performance of the individual. Uh, the most important, I think, is to plan their future work and their role within the organization and to set up and agree specific individual goals for them. And related to this particular um, theme, to identify some developmental needs for that particular person, which brings in training. And of course, during a, an appraisal, we do give a little on-the-spot coaching, which is a kind of training in itself. Okay. 
a good appraisal should allow for the exchange of feedback. So it's it's a two-way process, and really should focus on the longer-term career progression of that particular person. So it's a chance for people to give ideas about where they can go. And very importantly, again related to training, it's to increase motivation and set up objectives for future action. Okay. Now today's theme is <coughs> development, development strategies and training and continuous professional development. So, this was the job specification. This is what this has to do. And if you can just read that for a second. Okay. To remind yourselves of what her job actually involves. Okay, so it's very specific, but there will be gaps in her skills. Um, and that's probably where training comes in. Okay. <clears throat> so that's Lucy's job. And as an HR manager, we would hope to identify the gaps um, in her skills to make sure she can actually fulfill that role to the best of her ability. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this. This is something called an aptitude competency matrix. That's something I use as an HR person. Um, if you just study that for a moment, so we've got on the left, we've got the attitude of the person. I think Lucy has shown that her attitude might be a problem. At least her colleagues think so. And that her, on, on the bottom, we've got her competence. Is she very good at the job? And the answer is probably yes. So from what we know about Lucy, where would you place her, if you can just put a number in the chat box, where do you think she goes in that matrix? And what are the consequences of that? So if you can just type a number in from what you know about this person. So remember, she is perceived to be quite argumentative by her colleagues, but she doesn't think so. But her other KPI is extremely good. She's performed very well in her first six months. So, um, yes, we've got a, a four, which is not very good. <laughs> and we've got a three. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is it a two? Alexis put a two. Okay. I think that's quite dangerous, uh, Anton, to have a four. I always classify stuff by one, two, three, or four myself. And uh, I'd watch out for number fours. So maybe we're going to have to watch out for Lucy in the future. But OK, that's just a bit of the game. <laughs> and like uh, usual, you'll see all this on the PDF that you get after the, the session. OK. All right, so let's move on to looking at some uh, language associated with careers, personal skills and qualities. Um, let's have a look at Lucy's career so far. Okay, so a few photographs. Hmm. Okay, so these are some things that have happened in her career. Now, what I'd like you to do is to put the events that you're going to see in the chronological order. And what happened first, what happened next, etc. Okay, so let's have a look at what has happened so far in her career. These are all in the wrong order, so I want you to try and put that to the 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 chronological order, the order in which they actually happened. So she was offered a position as an assistant manager to the marketing director of Wilco, which is a retail company in the UK. Okay. 
before graduating, she applied for an She attended a second interview conducted by a panel of managers. She attended the interview but thought she hadn't got the job. While she was an employee, she took some courses on marketing with the Open University, which is a, a very famous uh, university in the UK for for people who can't physically attend the university. Quite interesting, I think. And she's been working in Russia for six months. I remember you need to put these in the order that they should be. Now she was dismissed after arguing with her boss. Lost the job. Uh, she was shortlisted for an interview with Tula Marketing. She was actually unemployed for six months. Um, she performed well and moved to Russia. Now she graduated with a degree in marketing from Lancaster University. Oops, sorry, let me go back. If indeed I can go back. Right. So you can see those, so take a minute and decide. Ah, technical problems today. Okay, decide which order these things actually occurred in her career. So, Lucy Luca graduated from Lancaster University with a degree in marketing and before graduation she applied for a number of different jobs. Uh, she was offered a position as assistant to the marketing manager at Wilco's but was dismissed after arguing with her boss, after which she was unemployed for six months. During this period, she took a number of courses on marketing with the Open University. She was shortlisted for an interview for a job at Tula Marketing, but wasn't successful the first time round. However, she was asked back for a second interview and was offered the position in Russia where she's been for the last six months. Uh, she performed well in the interview and has recently completed her first performance appraisal. She said that one of her goals is to attend as many training sessions as she can to continue developing as a marketing executive. Okay. Okay, so I'll just read through that again and you can follow. So Lucy Luca graduated from Lancaster University with a degree in marketing and before graduation she applied for a number of different jobs. She was offered a position as an assistant to the marketing manager at Wilco's but was dismissed after arguing with her boss, um, after which she was unemployed for six months. During this period she took a number of courses on marketing with the Open University. She was shortlisted for an interview for a job at Tula Marketing, but wasn't, wasn't successful the first time around. However, she was asked back for a second interview and was actually offered the position in Russia, where she's been for the last six months. She performed very well in the interview and has recently completed her first performance appraisal. Okay, so that's her career to date. Now she said during the appraisal that she really wanted to attend as many training sessions as possible so she can develop as a marketing executive, which is what her job is. Okay, now during um, our careers, the usual process is like this. Um, we've got the period, the recruitment process, we work, and then like my fishermen in Portugal, we retire. Now, training can fit in at any stage in this process. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is show you some vocabulary. <clears throat> and there are three items which are different. You to think which three items uh, are different from the others and why. Okay, so I've got on-the-job training, off-the-job training. 
apply for, attend an interview, be appointed, shortlist, take a sabbatical, be unemployed, retire, early retirement, be hired, resign, dismiss, make redundant, and that's it, sorry. I think that all of the other ones are about um, what happens inside a company um, in the process of recruitment, employment, retirement. So for me, the ones that are different would be on-the-job training and off-the-job training because they're not about about the process that we usually go through. They're kind of outside the diagram. We've got an every human resources HR training in many employee related and legally related topics is mandatory. That means that the company has to provide some training, um, especially for managers and supervisors. We need to equip our employees to handle their employee relations with responsibilities competently. But for maximum positive impact and learning, we need to make the training motivational and engaging. So we're going to have a quick at training. Here are some responses to a, a survey um, made by one company about what they wanted from training. So this is what the employees said they wanted from training. Okay, that it's necessary to help them to do their jobs on the new technologies. And training opportunities are fairly allocated across staff so that everybody has an opportunity for training, not just certain people in the company. Supervisors support employee efforts to learn outside the job. <coughs> so that people are sent to conferences, that if they're doing continuous education, like Lucy doing her Open University units in marketing, that the company would support that and perhaps even pay for it. Also, uh, supervisors should encourage their staff to be members in, in trade and professional organizations. Um, in Lucy's case, maybe the Institute of Marketing, if they would pay for her membership of that organization. They also said that a high priority is given by companies to providing appropriate training, the right training. Um, so generally, employees think this is extremely important. Um, and here's a little definition of what we mean by training. So the term training refers to the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and competencies as a result of the teaching of vocational and practical skills and knowledge that relate to specific useful competencies. Okay, that's quite a technical definition of training, but a good one. And here is some more information from employees from that survey. What they wanted from their training was that it was innovative, that it was memorable, practical, convincing, that it was hands-on, which is another way of saying practical, that it was actually fun and entertaining, it was useful, it was informative, stimulating, transferable, meaning that you can use skills in different areas of work, that it was motivating, and it was team building. Oops. Now, I want you to look at this list of adjectives, and I'm going to give you one minute to try to memorize them. Okay, so if you can say them in your heads, You've got exactly one minute to memorize those adjectives, starting now. Okay. <clears throat> All right, another 20 seconds to memorize those adjectives. And then we're going to have a race to see who can get the most. Okay. So 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there they go. Can you now type them into the chat box? And the person who gets the most will get a prize. Okay, are you ready? There's one from Anton. Innovative. Memorable. That's two for Anton. Olga's got memorable. That's one for Olga. Two, one. Any more? Any more? Hands on. That's two, two. Well done, Olga. Good. Oh, three, two to Olga. She's winning. Four two. <laughs> Excellent. So so far it's four two. Olga, she's winning. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, almost. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we'll stop the race there, and uh, we'll say that Olga is the winner. Okay. So remember that. Um, these were things that employees actually said. These adjectives were used by them um, to describe what they actually wanted from their training. And interestingly, probably not all of them know, but these were the top, the top ones. So I think interestingly they put entertaining, that it, it's fun. Uh, yeah, she must have been <laughs> making notes. Or maybe she's got a good memory. Okay. <laughs> So this this is what I want um, in general from training, and I do think it's interesting that it says entertaining, but maybe that helps people memorise things a bit better. Okay. Okay. So let's let's continue on with that uh, idea about training. Now, do you agree with these statements? Creating and offering professional development opportunities is a, an integral part of HR management. A little mistake there. Do you agree or disagree? Integral part, an integral part, meaning it's really important. So if you can type yes or no, if you agree or disagree. Hmm? Yep. And so I think so. I would agree. Okay. Just one vote on that one. Here's another one, and Perry says yes as well. Okay, staff training should have impact, which is probably what the adjectives are about, that it's practical, entertaining, useful. Yeah. Any votes on that one? Well, I think so. <laughs> okay. Everyone's a bit quiet about that one. Okay. As a manager, making opportunities available for for staff development is an important responsibility. Do we have any votes on that? Yep, helps motivation. Indeed it does. That's a key theme, I think, of training. Perry agrees. Okay. It adds value. Continuing professional development adds value to both the individual and to the organization. Agree or disagree? I think most of us probably agree with that. I certainly do. Yeah. Okay, great. And there's a very thoughtful looking employee. I think she needs some training. Okay, so if we just move on now. Now, let's have a look at some more vocabulary. Oops, not that. Sorry about that, I've duplicated that. 
Okay. So, let me just read this text here. We've got, employees appreciate the chance to develop knowledge and skills without ever leaving work. And you customize the job training employees receive to your workplace needs, norms, and culture. Internal job training and employee development bring a special plus. Unlike external job training, examples, terminology, and opportunities can reflect the culture, environment, and needs of your specific workplace. Now, from this list on your left, which expression is that describing? Which of those expressions on the job training, apply for, attend a meeting, which one of those does that text describe? Can we have some ideas in the chat box, please? Is it attending interviews? Is it off the job training? What is it? But it's a bit quiet there. Okay, <clears throat> I can certainly repeat the question. Which of the vocabulary items on the left is the uh, goes with that text? What is that text about? What's that text about? Is it early retirement? One of the items on that list, which one? Can't see the text. Can you see the text? No. Interesting. So uh, let me read it then. You can see the list, but not the text. Oh, that's another technical problem. You should see it, because I can. It says, employees appreciate the chance to develop knowledge and skills without ever leaving work. And you can customize the job training employees receive to your workplace needs, norms, and culture. Internal job training and employee development bring a special plus. Unlike external job training examples, terminology, and opportunities, can reflect the culture, environment, and needs of your workplace. Okay? That's about on the job training. <coughs> but that's odd that you can't see it. Well, can you tell me if you can see this text now? I'll put another text on the whiteboard. Oh, sorry, on the, um, on the PowerPoint. You can see that one there, okay. Again, it's one item from the list. I've put some spaces here. Which word or a form of that word goes into these spaces? This relationship is a win-win for all parties. The employer who seeks uh, the um, and organizations that employ the something, pair, Something is also a powerful form of job training and can contribute contribute experience, skills, and wisdom to a employee to increase and expand employee development, mm. whether with this boss or another experienced employee, is key in employee development within your organization. Thank you, Olga. The word is indeed mentor. <coughs> But which form of mentor are we talking about? So let me read the text as it should be, and we'll look at different forms of the word mentor. Okay. So this relationship is a win-win for all parties. The employee who seeks mentoring, the mentor, and organizations that employ the mentoring pair Mentoring is also a powerful form of job training and can contribute experience, skills, and wisdom to a mentored employee to increase and expand employee development. 
Mentoring, whether with the boss or another experienced employee, is key in employee development within an organization. Okay, so again, that's a bit more vocabulary. Now I'm going to show you some more types of training or the vocabulary of that in English. Okay, and what I'd like you to do is to allocate the vocabulary to one of these categories or a number of these categories. So we have different types of training. We can have internal training, external. It could be both in some ways. And I want you to think about whether it's cost effective for the company also. Okay, so for each one, decide where it goes. And then we have mentoring. Hmm. Where can we put that at in the table? We've got periodic in-house planning from internal sources. From external sources. Seminars. Conferences. Sessions. Presentations. Promotion, meaning getting a better job within the organization, going up a step. Mm -hmm. Transfer means doing a different job but at the same level within the organization. And what do you think that one is? A lateral move. I won't say quite yet. So I want you to think internal to the company, external, both are possible, and are these things cost effective? Well first, let's think which of these would be the most cost effective. Can you please write in the, in the chat box which of those types of training are cost effective for the company. So that it don't cost much or indeed don't really cost anything. Oh, nobody has any ideas about that. Well I think um it's that word again. I think mentoring is a very, very cost effective way of training, personally. And I think generally internal training is a lot more cost effective if you've got the resources there, if you've got the people. Why not use them? And any way you can do that is better. So personally, I'm in favor of in-house training um, as the big part of the plan. Okay, so let's move on. There are no right answers to this one. <laughs> and this is the Mark Roger, where my Russian friends, if this name isn't very convincing, but well, this is Sergey Limonov, and he's the HR director at Tula Marketing. Obviously, that's where Lucy works. Here are his notes. Okay, so she had her appraisal. Um, the the manager who did the appraisal was he was not actually Ser Sergey. Um, it was one of his colleagues, but. These notes were passed to him, and here's the plan of some of the possibilities for Lucy's yearly training plan. Okay. So let's have a look at those. So these are some of the things that she could go to. Okay. 
if you can just read those. Now I'd like each participant to type in three of those that they think are important for this person to do. Remember in the job description. Okay, so each of you, can you please put three things that Lucy should include in her training plan for the next year? Yep, business communications. And I'm going to put one in the chat box that is, uh, okay, databases are going to be very useful for her because if she's a marketing person, she's, she's got a portfolio of clients and uh, she needs to keep track of what's happening with them, so she will need to know how to use databases, yeah. I'm going to put another one that's not on this list. It could be external. Anger management. <laughs> I think that's Lizzie's problem. Yep. Absolutely. Olga suggests that uh, sales related by the actual team leader in the company would be very useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got a few suggestions about things that she should uh, she should do. Uh -huh. Which, yeah, obviously she's a marketing person, so she needs to. She's already got a degree in marketing, and she's doing some external training with the Open University. However, she's in a new market, which is uh, the Russian market. And also, she's going to um, to be part of a of a campaign in Western Europe for for Tula marketing. So that is very very important that she has the right skills for that. Okay. Again, you'll see these items on the the PDF. Okay. So let's move on to continuing professional development, which is a longer term view of training. Um, and just some more items of vocabulary about what this does, why it exists at all. So it's, it's to develop the personal mastery of, of an individual at their own job. If you take a continuing professional development view, um, it helps, I don't know if you're familiar with this term, the learning organization, but if everybody is motivated, <coughs> the organization itself will progress because as each person learns, the organization itself learns. Okay. TQM. Total quality management, so that's the relationship between long-term training and what happens at the end of it in terms of sales, in terms of the perception of people, of your company and services. That is, it's a form of quality assurance. We need to think about people being in different phases of their, their career. So in my field, teachers, uh, you can divide them into quite broadly novice and medium range and very experienced and each of those types of teacher needs a very different type of training so that's quite important to know. Job satisfaction pretty obvious. It also gives people flexibility in the type of skills that they, they can use so that if there's a a problem um, that person can can do somebody else's job if if necessary so training really helps with that um, and having a diverse range of skills again can help when things are needed to be done 
So basically extending and stretching, challenging people just that little bit to make them have a full range of skills that they can use at their job. Okay, career progress, well, training helps people do that. And very importantly, it adds, adds value to the whole company, I think. So a few things for you to think about um, in your own worlds about CPD. What role does it actually play in your own organization? Now, if you'd like to um, to start a discussion about this on, on a social network, um, if you write to us, we'll give you some links so that we can start actually talking about this um, as, as an ongoing issue. Okay, I think this is very important to discuss. What role does continuing professional development play in your own organization or ones that you've known in the past? Okay, um, what differences in, in personal development characteristics and motivation characterize your own staff at different phases in their careers. So that if you're a salesperson, think about somebody who's new to sales, what type of training do they need? If it's somebody who's in the mid stage of their career as a salesperson, what could you do to help them um, improve their performance and widen their skills repertoire? Okay, so just a couple of questions that we might talk about on our social network if you're interested. And also one last question. Um, the impact of CPD, how is this evaluated in your organization? Okay, does it work basically? And how do you know? Okay, that's great. And just to finish off, um, a little, a few thoughts about training and quality management. A little thing I got from a book. Um, for consumers of your products or services, it is the actual experience of what your organization has provided which determines their definition of quality. Where does training fit into this? Okay. So some relationships between training and quality management um, to ensure all your staff are able to meet the needs of their roles, to motivate your staff to deliver the organization's objectives, to avoid the cost of lost business opportunities, very, very important one for me, to help staff meet their potential. So if they're, if they're meeting their potential, they're going to feel good and that gives value to the organization. To raise their morale, people prefer to be creative, innovative, adaptable, and productive. If they're trained and do training in things that interest them and are practical for their, their job, they're going to feel better. And that adds value again to the company. And it also helps to retain staff and ultimately to retain clients because you've got happy people who are being fulfilled through their training. And that is all for this session. So thank you very much again.